then ding, 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 I found the answer, I think. It slapped me right in the face. If that's not the most insensitive thing I've read today, I don't know what is. Spoiler alert, it was not that. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sam. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. I am so happy to have you here with me again this week for all of the shenanigans. If you are new here and this is the first time you are seeing my face, welcome. I make weekly videos dissecting internet nonsense, so if you're into that type of thing or you like today's video, I hope that you'll consider liking and subscribing. It really helps out the channel and make sure that you never miss another upload from me. So today I want to talk about something that's been building up little by little throughout the last year, maybe year and a half. I've been gathering little tidbits squirreling things away in my little folders for these videos, and finally, I think I'm ready to talk about it. As we've all witnessed over the last year or so, the internet has been inundated with creators excited to share their weight loss journeys using weight loss drugs like Ozempic and Manjaro. Their content is informative as they choose to share everything with their audiences, including how they choose their injection site, how they prepare for injection day, what their new eating habits look like, and so much more. So if you want to learn about people's experiences with these drugs, there is so much information out there to be consumed. And while not all of that content is positive, with some creators choosing to share that they've had adverse experiences with the medications, it has appeared, at least to me, that most of this content is being created organically by creators who are just excited to share their sort of experiences and weight loss journeys with their audiences. But in the background, lurking quietly, has been Novo Nordisk's online marketing. Let's start with earlier this year when we noticed that Anna O'Brien from Glitter and Lasers was being featured on a Novo Nordisk ad where it was listing her as a paid spokesperson. We followed that ad and found a podcast here on YouTube called It's Bigger Than Me. As just a little refresher, let's go ahead and take a look at a clip from that podcast. The lens of trying to cope and doing the best we could at the time, it becomes just another way of perpetuating shame in ourselves presently, doesn't it? And keeping us stuck. Mm. <laughs> something I deal with. I understand. As a health advocate for my patients, my message is that obesity is not something you have to deal with alone, and it never should have been in the first place. Luckily, I finally found a doctor I love, and I'm on a health journey, and that's tailored to me and my challenges and my body because I've finally begun to understand that there isn't this one-size-fits-all solution for obesity. There just isn't. Mm. So tell me what your specific journey includes. Well, it started with my doctor, mm -hmm. and we worked out a weight management plan that really worked for me. I work to get out of my comfort zone all the time, and I try new things physically. I've started meditating in order to create mindfulness in my life, and I try to make sure I'm drinking enough water and sleeping enough. Those really do help. We won't get too deep here since we've already done a deep dive video on the channel. I will go ahead and link that down below just in case you're interested in learning more. But what I will remind you of is that we collectively sort of agreed that this podcast was very strange because the host always had two guests, right? There were seven episodes and each episode was pretty similar in setup. But where the strangeness sort of came from is that the host and the guests really didn't have any chemistry. They weren't looking at each other and it was a very, very obvious that they were reading from teleprompters because none of it seemed natural at all. Perhaps the most important thing that we flagged was that this podcast was being hosted by Novo Nordisk, the company that creates Ozempic and Wagovi. And they were bringing on doctors and also plus size influencers and celebrities to talk to one another about the complexities of living with obesity. But not once in their seven episodes did they ever mention their own medication. And this is the part that still sticks with me, because I cannot figure out for the life of me 
why they've decided to create this podcast, but also a movement that has conferences as a part of it called It's Bigger Than Me, if it wasn't in line with marketing their weight loss drug. Because despite us being told every day repeatedly that there are shortages of this medication, their marketing and advertising has never stopped. If you remember, we also went ahead and looked at the website behind the It's Bigger Than Me movement. And on that website, the stated purpose was to shift the conversation around weight and obesity so that the world can begin to understand that through science and understanding, Obesity is a manageable health condition. Now, on top of the podcast being weird, on top of not understanding the movement, sort of unintentionally kept up with Novo Nordisk via Anna from Glitter and Lasers. We have watched together as Anna has created hundreds of videos about her health, sharing workouts sponsored by Copilot, and her favorite protein snacks that are linked for anyone to purchase using her affiliate codes. It already felt icky. And then at some point, we learned via her smallest platform that Anna was actually taking a weight loss drug while she was being a paid spokesperson for Novo Nordisk. And since that broke, myself and a lot of my YouTube colleagues have made videos about it. And there's been a lot of speculation that maybe she couldn't share that because her sponsorship agreement barred her from doing so until she could prove that she was going to lose a substantial amount of weight. But here is something to consider based on everything we've talked about so far. Just a few months ago, Anna posted a video titled 50 Workouts Later, which was a sponsored video to promote her workouts with Copilot. But in a pinned comment, Anna said the following. I am seeing some very fiery comments about how I supposedly do not mention that I am taking medication to help in my health journey. To be very clear, this video is not about weight loss, but rather my increase in flexibility, mobility, and strength. Have I also lost weight in the time these things have improved? Sure. Am I taking a weight loss medication? Yes. I have never denied that. I just have to interrupt to say maybe you never explicitly denied it, but you did go out of your way to conveniently omit it, especially from your larger platforms where you're making a lot of money off your workout videos. Anyway, she continues, additionally, my change in weight is also due to treating several health conditions like Hashimoto's, genetic disorders, severe anemia, and chronic pain. Should I also list every single condition I live with and every medication and treatment I use to manage them every time I post a video? When I first saw this pinned comment and read it and screen captured it because I thought for sure she'd dirty delete it, I didn't make a video the same way my colleagues did, but I did have that same sort of visceral reaction of wanting to shout from the rooftops, no, Anna, that's not what we mean. We mean it's not a great look for you to conveniently omit that you're taking a weight loss drug while continuing to post workout content like that's how you're losing weight so rapidly. It's kind of dangerous for your audience, especially of 8 million youngsters on TikTok. Because that is what she is pushing and promoting to her more than 8 million followers on TikTok. That is the problem. But I didn't make that video. I took this clip, I took a screen capture, I tucked it away in a folder like I do with everything, and I waited. Because I felt like I was missing a piece of the puzzle. And every once in a while, I thought about why Anna would equate taking a weight loss medication to the rest of her health conditions. Like, that just seems so strange to me. And then ding, 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 I found the answer, I think. It slapped me right in the face. This is a direct result of Novo Nordisk's marketing. And I feel comfortable and confident sharing that thought because Anna herself told us that she went to an It's Bigger Than Me conference in Austin, Texas, and that it was very profound for her to hear people talking about obesity this way. About nine months ago, I went to an event in Houston for It's Bigger Than Me. In case you're not familiar with it, It's Bigger Than Me is a movement actually sponsored by Novo Nordisk 
that is really on a mission to just change the way the world sees, thinks, and treats people with obesity by having open and shame-free discussions. So talking about the hard subjects that affect people like me in order to make sure that we can receive the treatment we deserve. There was a whole bunch of like panelists and Queen Latifah actually was the host talking about how obesity affects people's lives, weight stigma, all of that type of stuff. And I remember a doctor came to speak, her name was Dr. Horn, and she talked about how we need to change the way we look at people with obesity. That we need to stop judging them or punishing them for their bodies and instead, you know, get to the root of what's causing uh, them to have excess weight. And I remember watching this and it to me, it just felt like a totally radical way to look at obesity, to treat it as like a disease and not like a moral failing or like a problem that I have. And, and, and I'll be honest, when I first heard it, it did make me a little uncomfortable because it was such a radical concept because I felt villainized for being overweight, but I've also felt villainized for saying I don't always feel great or that I might want to change. Now, you might be asking yourself, Sam, why did you tuck this away? Why has it been away for a few months? And now suddenly it's come to the forefront of your brain. Why are you ready to talk about it now? Well, recently I was doom scrolling, as one does, and I happened across a TV series sponsored by Novo Nordisk. It turns out Novo Nordisk partnered with AMC to create a TV series called Thick Skin. A web page designed for the series describes it as a four-part docu-series with explainer vignettes that focus on science and facts surrounding obesity without removing the spotlight from the four women being featured. It also states that Novo's goal in creating the series is to reduce the barriers to healthcare for larger bodied people ultimately changing the narrative and destigmatizing obesity. And I just have to add this in because I am me and it was too good not to share with y'all. As I was researching the, the series, after I watched it, by the way, I found an interview where they talked about why they selected Philly as the location for filming. And in that interview, they mentioned that the location was interesting to them because of cultural diversity. And then, I kid you not, they just decided to throw in there that the city's high obesity rates also made it just a wonderful place for them. They had a plethora of people to choose from <laughs> to be able to film. If that's not the most insensitive thing I've read today, I don't know what is. I am so sorry to the people of Philly, but this is how you're being described by Novo Nordisk. Just putting that out there for y'all. So anyway, once I knew that this thing existed, I knew that I needed to watch it, right? I'm already in deep with the Novo Nordisk marketing. Why not? Just check it out and see what it's about. So I figured out that via my Amazon Prime, I could get access to AMC Plus to go ahead and watch this thing. The description that pops up on AMC Plus reads, Thick skin follows the lives of four women in Philadelphia who face weight stigma every day of their lives. Now, with that description, I will be perfectly honest, I did not know what to expect going into this thing. I was almost fully prepared to take several seats <laughs> on my recent comments about fat people not being targeted and harassed in public, right? I fully expected to see the stigma on full display and being captured on film. Spoiler alert, it was not that. Instead, it introduced me to four women, Queen, Ashley, Lexi, and Suzanne. Each had their own storyline, and the four storylines were kind of intermixed with one another. The editing style was reminiscent of like a teen mom episode where they just break down each story into little bite-sized pieces so that you're seeing the stories sort of interspersed with one another. The thing is, and I'm going to try to say this as nicely as possible, there was nothing extraordinary about any of their stories. These women were living very average lives. They had successful careers. They were in loving, seemed like healthy relationships. I mean, it's TV, so who knows? But every single one of them was in a relationship and had things going for them and 
were talking about their successes. The only thing that they really shared that would even relate to weight stigma or dealing with the stigma of being plus size or obese was that they were either bullied or dealt with that when they were children or when they were younger. And most of it coming from their own families. There was nothing in this film that even touched on weight stigma in everyday life. So that description is just not the truth in any way, shape, or form. And a good example of this is Queen's story. She was a dancer in her youth and her mother was her dance instructor. And through her story highlights, they reveal that her mom was pretty harsh on her because of existing in the dance world. And they do actually interview her mother and she talks about trying to protect her because she knew that they would never take her daughter seriously if she was bigger than the other dancers. And she talks about how she had just been trying to do the right thing, but maybe didn't do it the right way. These are things that were probably really hard for them to live through and things that they had to mend that probably weren't easy. But the series very clearly highlights that they do in fact still have a relationship it seems somewhat healthy, although they do have disagreements. But the disagreement has nothing to do with Queen's weight, but rather that she's chosen for her career path to be a burlesque dancer. That is what's causing current tension in her life, in her relationship with her mother. And yet and still, she was chosen for this docuseries talking about the difficulties of living in an obese body. Right? The stigma of everyday life, the weight stigma. The only thing I concluded after watching this 90 minute series, which was all smashed together in one episode, in case you're curious, was that these women are living normal lives. Kind of like I said in my last video, if you put a camera on me, my life would not look that much different than the normal person. They filmed a whole ass docuseries and their lives did not look that different than the normal person. There was no everyday weight stigma. It was not captured. No one was being targeted and harassed on the streets. Rather, they had completely normal lives. They had loved ones. They had children. They had family dynamics. They had all of the things that regular people deal with in their lives. There was nothing extraordinary. Nothing that was moving. Nothing that was nothing to do with the stigma of living with obesity. So what was the point. It's a question I still haven't answered. And honestly, like I'll be honest with you, my conspiracy brain 100% thinks that this is Novo Nordisk, like covertly marketing to try to get all fat people on board, especially the ones who might be on the fence, because it's not lost on me that they're a corporation, right? And it's their goal and their job to make money. That's really all they want out of this whole thing. But what I can't figure out for the life of me is how working with creators like Anna or the women on this TV series is going to accomplish that goal. Because in that whole series, as I've just stated, they never once mentioned themselves, Novo Nordisk, as a company outside of the credits. They never once mentioned that these weight loss drugs exist or how they could help people, even though Suzanne is in the healthcare industry, as was her father, none of this was ever mentioned. It was just omitted exactly the same way they did in the podcast with Anna. And I have also noted that they're getting into film. They've created a film called Embodied, and I can see that it's on a list for the Tribeca Film Festival X 2023. It could just be because I'm not savvy with film. I don't know. I have tried everything, scouring the internet, and I cannot seem to find how I could watch this. So if any of you are film savvy and can point me in the right direction, please do, because inquiring minds need to know what this film is about. And I will watch it and report back if someone can tell me how to watch it. All right, that is all I have for you guys today. And at this point, I'm curious to know, have you seen Novo's covert marketing in other places? Had you heard of their TV series? Did you know they were getting into film? What is the point of it all? Do you have a conspiracy brain like me? Or do you think it's just pure drug marketing and that's it? 
you will have to let me know, and you know I love reading your comments, so please do leave them for me. And for all my introvert friends out there who do not feel comfortable leaving your opinion in an internet comment section, I see you, I feel you, go ahead and leave me some sort of like alien or UFO emoji because we're going 100% conspiracy brain today. I wore the green for you, so go ahead and leave those for me because I love seeing your emojis just as much as I love reading those opinions. As always, thank you all so, so much for being here with me this week. I will see you in the next one. Bye.